Hey, it's Dominic here on Sin. I'm talking to the man, the myth, the legend of Australian hardcore and metal, who a few years ago was known best for his work in I Killed the Prom Queen. His current band, Confession, are releasing their third full length called Life and Death on the 20th of June. There's no one quite like him in the Australian music scene. Mr. Michael Crafter, how are you, young man? I'm good. I'm in Brisbane. I've had zero sleep from a horrible overnight flight last night. Oh, overnight? That's a bit rough. Yeah, we... It was kind of the only thing that was relatively cheap out of Perth because it's never, it's never cheap flying out of Perth. I think you can, you fly to Bali cheaper out of Perth than going to Brisbane, that's for sure. <laughs> uh, firstly, I want to say uh, congratulations on the new album. It's been a while between the releases. Uh, the first single from um, The Life and Death uh, is called Fuck Cancer, which I know is a really personal issue, and it's uh, also something that affects a lot of people. Was it difficult to explore that subject when you were writing, like such a personal subject? Um, I think because I was going through it, through it so much, I just found out my dad has had can uh, had can uh, he had cancer just literally days before I went into the studio and stuff. So I kind of was at the LA airport and I just kind of was sitting there thinking about stuff because I flew by myself, so I had a lot of time to think about the situation and how it kind of just started pulling my family to bit, bit, bit by bit, whether it, when it was first my, one of my best mates and then it was my mum getting uh, cancer and then and now my dad. So I was just like, I'm just going to delete everything. I'm going to rip everything out. I'm going to throw it in the bin and I'll start again. Mm-hmm. I kind of didn't really have much. I had a few things that I felt real personal about that I kept in my iPad and stuff. But I think with that song, we just kind of, I just kind of was like, press press record and I'll just come up with something, you know? I kind of had the ideas in my head and I just kind of sung them and they just came out real good, like for what I wanted, you know? Like it just came out, it, it's real, you know? It's, and there's no bullshit, you can understand exactly what I'm saying. I don't like being that, the band that has a bunch of metaphors that you literally like, there's words that I don't even know, you know? Like I listen to Parkway and Winston has words I legitimately have never heard of <laughs> and have no idea what the usage of them is. But for me, I'm not like that, you know? I don't read a whole lot of books. I just kind of write down what I'm thinking at the time. And yeah, like I just kind of have to say what is exactly what's real to me. And I feel like been there and for the last few years, it's been the most real topic in my life because it's affected us so heavily. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like a it, no-nonsense um, way to go about it. Well, that's the thing. You can, only, you can only, like, say really one thing, I think, that's fight cancer because, seriously, it's fucking shit out. Yeah. And the way it does affect... It doesn't just affect, like, old people. It doesn't affect, like, unhealthy people. It, infect, it can affect anyone, you know? Like, my friend was one of the fittest, healthiest dudes I know, and, yeah, it, it struck him down in his early 30s. So it's just, like, you just never know. Like, you never know when your time's up. You never know if it could be you and you never know how or why you're going to get it. Mm. Um, your, your first album was called Cancer as well. Um, in, in, even though you, you said, you know, you're not really down with metaphors and stuff like that, was, was Fuck Cancer also a way to say sort of fuck what the band used to be or, or just say... Uh, of- no, not, not at all because I wrote the title Cancer because at the time someone I knew back then was going through it and I just felt like it was, it was such a crazy experience to see that person lose their hair and deal with exactly what what they were like what they were having to deal with and I felt it was a I don't know at the time I was just like let's just call this city cancer because it's it's what I've seen in the last few months and stuff I did I didn't generally push the topic of what it was back then but mm. it definitely was on my mind a lot seeing another friend's mum go through it like it was a girlfriend's mum at the time and to see them go through it and just like them kind of overcoming it and stuff and then I kind of thought at the time imagine if my parents got it and how I'd feel and then it's all kind of steamrolled and it's all kind of happened for me at once so it's got nothing to do with the the, the, the band the way it was and the band it is now it's two different kinds of times mm-hmm. in my life but for me it's still the same type of music it's still a bunch of mates playing music and we still get to do a lot of cool stuff although the lineup's changed I still am singing the same shit that's always been on my mind just whatever it may be at each CD is a different different topic you know mm-hmm. you recorded the first album here in Melbourne uh, and you did the second one in, in Gothenburg in Sweden and you went over to the US for the third one was there any particular reason why you went over there well we talked to Frederick about coming back and he was pretty busy and stuff and we listened to a lot of stuff and we're just like 
what's going to be the best kind of like bang for the buck, you know? Like, where can we go in for the longest amount of time, be able to work on songs bit by bit and have a bit more time up our sleeve than we, we generally would if we went with a Frederick Nordstrom or something like that. So we, we went to Daniel Castleman because we uh, he'd worked with that band, a band called Resist the Thought from Sydney. He'd worked with Impending Doom. He'd done a lot of Adelaide Dying stuff and he had done all the Austrian Death Machine stuff. So he'd done some real heavy stuff and the value was there as far as the time we could spend in the studio, the time we could spend on the sound. And we knew he had the ability to mix a heavy CD. So it's it's clear, it's real, you know. There's not, there's not no, no nonsense about it, you know. Like, even the fact that we added, like, orchestras and, like, stuff like that, we actually got people to record those parts like yeah. none of it's none of it's fake it's actual people playing and it's it's it added a new element to the band I feel and it's kind of add, it's kind of there's only so much melody you can hear in a guitarist like obviously people know that the band's been known for being melodic and stuff but I feel like the string stuff just really brought out a bit more of how melodic some of the parts really are mm-hmm. so it kind of just added a whole new element and it worked and everything kind of just kind of rolled into one and we are kind of like we started with a bunch of songs which we thought were pretty good and then with a bit of tweaking and stuff we are like this is great like we're all stoked on this CD and we're leaving really happy about an album that necessarily when we went in there we were really unsure about because I think every band's a little bit unsure about what they're going to record you know mm-hmm. I think it's part and parcel with being in a band you never you never 100% sold on your own music or your own lyrics or, or anything you know you just kind of wing it I think I think yeah. it's always with a band you just hope hope it's hope uh, I guess people will sing along hope people will jump up and down and you hope people will have an, as much appreciation for the songs as you do yourself yeah um, and so yeah you were over there with Dan recording in Lambesis Studios did any of that sort of shenanigans going on with Tim Lambesis have any effect on the sessions uh, at all or do you just kind of ignore nah, that because because it's like it, it stopped being Tim's studio probably about uh, eight months ago or something so it's just called uh, Castleman Studios now but we were like on the way and everyone's like don't bring it up don't like yeah. let him bring it up you know and then we're driving and I was like so Tim he tried to kill his wife hey eh? <laughs> and Dan's like yeah man and, like just was like yeah he's crazy dude and yeah it was obviously like Tim would call Dan sometimes to help with um like he needed some advice on some computer stuff for recording and stuff because he was Tim was still recording from his own home and stuff where mm. he was on house arrest and a couple of the Adelaide Dying dudes came in and we just had a bit of a chat and they showed us their new their new band and stuff at the time so which they all recorded with Dan as well so yeah we, we, we obviously chatted about it and we obviously heard the ins and outs of the story and we were just mind blown because I knew Tim I had got to play shows with Tim over the years and stuff he was always pretty quiet reserved dude but sometimes the quiet ones are the most mentally insane and most unstable yeah it's a it's a, it was yeah one hell of a crazy situation as, as the whole thing unfurled it just it was unreal mind blowing fully mind blowing <laughs> so they basically yeah Dan just took took the studio and Tim obviously went to jail so yeah that was that kind of, I think it's it's kind of in Dan's favor it's kind of worked out way better for him because he has the studio for himself now and he doesn't doesn't have to i guess worry about tim being a uh, unstable mess of a human around the place yeah um now you're not the only michael crafter in the oz punk and metal scene have you, you do you know of the band michael crafter yeah i actually warned him if they were talking shit on my family then i was gonna make things pretty serious but if they were just having fun and they're just playing shows and whatever i said i was like if you, if you start talking about my daughter or my girlfriend or like you can say what you want about me but if you start talking about anything family related then it's beyond like a joke as a band you know Mm -hmm. it's like beyond fun so I kind of said to him I was like here's the deal as long as you don't do that I don't really care and yeah as far as I know I think they just whinge to a bunch of people never I don't really care The, the fucking band sounds horrible. It's, yeah. like, it's horrible. The recordings are horrible. It's like if you want to record with a toaster and an iron plugged into your computer and think that sounds good, like it seriously like sounds like they've recorded it with like tin uh, cans. Mi- yeah, a microphone you've bought from bloody Dick Smith. It's <laughs> horrible. But 
that's what those bands are into and they're really punk and they're this and they're that but I don't want to listen to something with a shit house recording on about a heel going on uh, um, speaking of uh, Australian bands and stuff a few years back uh, you called out AJ about Soundwave not having enough local talent and since yeah. then they've had Amity and They Art as Murder and a couple of other bands on. they put us on yeah 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 exactly <laughs> so, so, yeah, it worked. Me and AJ are, like, good mates now. We he put us on Warp Tour. Yeah, like, it kind of, like, I think me saying that, I don't make I don't necessarily think me saying it changed everything, but me saying it was one of the first people. Fans were scared to call him out, you know? I'm not scared of saying something when it comes to music, you know? He has this, they had this ability to put on all these really good bands, the North Lanes and the In Hearts Wakes and the Amity and bloody liar and, and like even put my own band on like we got to play opportunity to play to thousands of people which you don't get unless you're on a parkway drive tour you know so mm-hmm. it was cool to be able to vent my frustration on what aj was doing and he opened his eyes and opened his mind to a lot of things i had to say which was cool and yeah me and him can have a real good conversation nowadays which is it's good because a lot of bands obviously want to play those bigger shows and it's Soundwave is a real good tour to be able to do that on. It's the biggest thing in Australia and yeah, um, it's kind of one of those things where when, when we were told we could be on it, we were just stoked because I was like, yes, <laughs> fighting with AJ on Twitter really worked. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it, it, um, it, which sort of takes me back to the first time I got to see you guys live was uh, the 2009 tour Sweatfest. I got to see you guys in Park, uh, Parkway Drive in the hometown of Byron Bay. Uh, you still keep up with the boys, don't you? Oh, yeah. It's- I talk, to them, I talk to at least one of them nearly every day. Crazy. Like they're still, still my best mates. So yeah. things things don't change with us, you know. We'll all not see each other for six months and then we'll just go back to when we see each other, we're just all talking shit and giving each other shit like we were 10 years ago. So we don't grow up in that regard and, like, I don't know, they're always there for me, you know. Like, when I'm going through some shit, I've, when I've been going through my family shit, they've all been, like, checking on me and making sure... I'm okay and I'm dealing with stuff okay and yeah it's 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 good it's good to have like I don't care what band they play in like you know like mm-hmm. they're my mates and they've been my mates a long time they just happen to be able to sell out thousands and thousands of people venues across the whole world but at the end of the day they they hasn't really hasn't affected them one bit they're still yeah. there for their friends and they're still kind of doing a lot of what they're doing in life for the same reasons you know so when they started a band I think they're on the on the endless pursuit of uh, surf and yeah. playing shows, I think the surfing comes before the playing shows nowadays. <laughs> but I think like I think they they plan their surf trips and then they decide if they're going to do a tour up surf trip or not <laughs> uh, you're not you're not a man who shies away from being busy either uh, what, what are the plans for yourself and for confession after the album tour um, well I think we're going to do because this Rampage tour isn't really officially an al- our album tour oh, okay. what we're actually planning is maybe to do something around October where we'll play the album in full um and just kind of do something a lot of other bands don't do, you know, like they release a CD and they play a few songs off the new CD and then they play all some old songs. I want to be like be able to play the whole CD start to finish mm-hmm. and it be strong enough, you know, like I feel like this album's strong enough to be able to do it if people want to come along and see that and hopefully we can put on a couple festival-like shows and donate a bit of money to cancer uh, cancer research or, or to a, uh, a, 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 can- a cancer-related charity maybe that affects kids, you know, like something a, a little bit uh, closer to home now I'm a father and stuff and I see my daughter and I know what it would feel like if my daughter got sick you know so mm. maybe something a, a little bit like that you know so we've had a bit of a chat with a few promoters and stuff so hopefully we can put on some charity style events and be able to get a few people along and be able to donate a good amount of money so yeah we're hopefully be able to do something like that around October but we're just kind of in the talks of it yeah. at the moment so yeah which will be cool so other than that just doing doing business with my brand and my I had a printing company and all sorts of stuff I've too busy <laughs> too busy That's too good. busy that I left for tour and I couldn't fit everything in because I'm bloody moving house and moving businesses and all sorts of stuff I'm like tour it happens always like happens when I've got way too much on but at the same time it's like I need a head break from the other stuff mm. and so this is where I get to at least release a bit of the built up frustration which is day to day work mm-hmm. yeah and, and speaking of, of business uh, Confession is playing a bunch of shows most notably June 27th at the work 
Breakfast Club in Fitzroy and an all-ages show on the 28th at the Arrow on Swanston. And I'm sure you'll be able to pick up a copy of Life and Death at the at the show. Yeah, and uh, it's my birthday on the 28th, so I'm just going to classify that show as my birthday party just to make it a lot better. That is going to be insane. That's going to be a good show. Yeah, I'm going to actually I'm actually going to make an event on Facebook with a flyer and say it's my birthday party. <laughs> Just because it's funnier. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's going to be so good. All right. Uh, Michael Crafter, thank you so, so much for coming and hanging out with me today. Easy. All good. Too easy. Too easy.